Good evening, everyone. I am back for my second segment on build order lessons here. Uh, today we are going to be covering Dongre Goose 7 Roach Rush. And uh, this replay is actually from a Platinum tournament, uh, but it was executed so flawlessly that I decided to actually use it for my lesson today. Uh, and it is going to feature the pink Zerg spawning at the bottom left-hand side, Vans, and our green Protoss player on the bottom right, Applejack. Now, typically, Dongrei Goose 7 Roach Rush is used against Terran players that open Reactor Hellions. However, it can be used if you can get a hatch first down against Protoss. Um, so, basically, uh, this build is designed to expand, get a large number of drones up, and still apply a ton of pressure. Uh, it is a little bit all-in, but you can typically do a ton of damage if you make the right reads to start. So, um, we are going to have Vans droning up, going 9 Overlord, uh, pretty typical. Not going to pool early. Scout at 12. Uh, a good scout timing for Zerg. Applejack, on the other hand, is going to go for a very fast Forge Fast Expand, uh, which of course will leave him open to a little bit of pressure from Roaches or any other unit. And, um, yeah, basically we're going to pay attention to Vans this whole game here and uh, see exactly what he's going to be doing on the inside of his base. So he's currently at 15 supply. Going to move that drone out to take his first hatchery. Now very, very good to check for pylons behind your mineral line before you put this down. It would be so random if a probe had already gotten a pylon down, especially on a map like Taldorim Alter. And he is going to uh, take an extra second put that hatchery down, but that's okay. It's not going to be too big of a deal here. So the hatchery does go down, and back in Vans' main, he's going to drop his pool at 14. Now there are a couple of variations to this. Um, personally, I like 15 hatch, 16 gas, 15 pool, but this variation works absolutely fine. Uh, the timings still work on it. Just a little bit more economical to get those drones out a little earlier, but... He looks like he's going to drop a 15, 15, 15-ish, 15 more or less, uh, with that pool before gas. And uh, everything's going to work out fine. It's not going to be a big deal. He does see that the drone is coming in here, or a probe is coming in here, rather. And because he went hatch first, he is patrolling his drone between these two points to make sure he doesn't get pylon blocked in. Uh, very, very, very smart choice. Uh, needs to make sure that he... You know, of course, it doesn't get pylon walled in because the probe could put the pylons down over here. But he is going to move that drone around make sure that he is watching over that probe. Not going to get walled in here. So we see that our Protoss player went forge first into cannon into Nexus. And uh, Vance saw that. So uh, he knows that... Uh, sorry, Applejack is going to have a little bit of a late economy here. And uh, without that early gateway, it's not going to be quite as defended by sentries and such. More defended by cannons, if anything. But Vant is going to make two queens here and uh, should start one set of lings in just a second. And you really need these lings out for the build uh, so that you can deny any scouts from getting into your base. Very, very, very important. So for this Roach Rush build, you do get Zergling speed. Queens come out. Should see immediate injects from both of them. There you go. That's one. That's two. So these two lings are on their way out. The probe has left the base, so he has a little bit of time to get them out. Could have built these lings a little bit earlier, but getting those drones out is going to be a little more economical. And he drops the Roche Warren in the least scoutable location for the probe, which is the back of his main. And he needs to use these lings to deny this probe from getting in and re-scouting him. So... Uh, this build revolves around getting two queens, zergling speed, continuing to mine gas the whole time, and getting that roach warren at 28 supply. And at 28 supply, you cut production, and you make three overlords. Well, if you just want to do roach pressure, you make only two. And then you make seven roaches, and that'll put you at 42 out of 44 supply. But he is going to make three, and he's actually going to turn this into an all-in, because you get zergling speed as well. So, you pop all your roaches as soon as your roach warren pops. And as we can see, he's going to make seven or eight up here. 5 start. He's a little bit mineral starved. Uh, mostly because of his opening, actually. He didn't get those drones out uh, before all the rest of his stuff. But he did take two guys off gas to get more mineral production. And he's at 8 roaches on the way out right now. He has control of the tower. He sees the front of the Protoss base. Sees that there is only one cannon. And obviously he was doing this before he knew there was only one cannon there. But with two gateways out, our Protoss player is getting a 
uh, stalk or sorry, two stalkers and one sentry. And one sentry not going to be enough to hold this. So, a little bit of a mistake on our Protoss players' fault aside, but uh, we're about to see how much damage this can actually do. So, the eight roaches are out on the field. They are at the tower grouping up, and we have a ton of zerglings in production. And this is this is exactly the way you want to do it. It's very important to make the roaches first. Send them across and reinforce with the Lings, because the Lings, of course, will get there much faster than any reinforcing roaches. So, these eight roaches' job is to break the wall in. And he's going to wait just a second for a few more Lings here, making two more overlords, making sure he's not getting too supply blocked. Going to continue to stream Lings in at the front. We do see a force field go down to try to block off any of the surface area from that forward, but the cannon goes down immediately. Zealot dies immediately. Cybernetic score are going to die immediately, and really there is almost nothing our Protoss player can do from here. He could have made more sentries, but this is so many units, and Applejack only had one cannon. So, as you can see, uh, the Harvester count right now, 23 to 39, so Protoss way in the lead, but our Zerg player is in fact going to take this game very easily, uh, and that's, that's basically how this wor build works. So, of course, uh, you can do this against Terran. Don't do it against Zerg because you have no units at the beginning. You'll die to a speedling all in or something. But against the Terran, that's opening reactor Hellions, meaning if you see a gas first, they usually will have two Hellions and a barracks with a tech lab, and they need to see your roaches coming across the map and then put down a bunker. You can apply a lot of pressure. You can go around the bunker. Sometimes you can get the SCV before it finishes it. Uh, and potentially you can do a lot of damage because they in took all their time to get Hellions out to take map control from Zerglings when in fact you opened with very fast roaches in an economical fashion that they weren't ready for because you took that expansion so early. So uh, hopefully that helps everyone that was trying to learn the 7 Roach Rush. I know I got a lot of requests for this one. Uh, so you can all in with it, but you don't have to. You don't have to send those Speedlings in afterwards. Of course, if they have Siege Tanks out or a lot of Cannons, it's going to devastate your economy your opponent's going to be way ahead but a very good way to put pressure on very early uh and possibly catch an opponent off guard so thanks for watching everyone please subscribe to my youtube channel come check me out on twitch at twitch.tv buddhism 101 and i'll see you all next time thanks